Hey, welcome back to the Clovis Hills Podcast. I'm Pastor Dwayne Coleman, and I'm here with... Mary Aiello, our campus admin for Old Town. OTC. Hey, uh, we just want to recap the video, and uh, we had a great service uh, this morning. And so uh, now we're just going to do a little recap. Mary? Yeah, we just have a couple questions for you. Just wanted yeah. to dive into, you know, you were reading that passage in Galatians where Paul is talking um, can you break down what he was saying towards spiritual people? Yes, uh, I love it because we we all well, we all have, if you've been in church, our own interpretation of spiritual people. But what's cool is in Galatians chapter five, the apostle Paul gives us a biblical understanding of spiritual people, and it's really easy. He gives us some key phrases such as uh, people who are guided by the Holy Spirit, uh, those who are in step with the Holy Spirit. In other words, people who are in in a lifestyle of submission to the Holy Spirit. And that's not ambiguous or mysterious because he also makes it practical. And and I'll say it in these words, Uh, just as we can yield to temptation and over time that can build negative character in us, so we can yield to the influence of the Holy Spirit. Paul teaches us in Galatians that we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And so we can, uh, sometimes you hear the language, uh, you're listening to the voice of God. It may not always be an audible voice, uh, but there's those inclinations. There's the tugging on the heart that you feel from the Holy Spirit. Just as you can feel the tug of temptation, uh, now that the Spirit of God is in you, you can feel the tug towards righteousness, towards the path mm-hmm. of, of Christ. And so mm-hmm. over time, practicing saying yes to the Spirit of God, it develops in a spiritual maturity. And now again, spiritual maturity is not an ambiguous thing. He's very specific, Galatians 5.22, that the spiritual mature people uh, display and exhibit the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and a big one, (laughs) self-control. That's really good. I like the way you worded that. I also like the part in your sermon where you were talking about um, the difference between bearing one another's burdens Mm. versus carrying the load that, you know, there's a difference there in the scripture. Can you break that down one more time for us? Yeah, I I love this. And it's it's a huge deal. And you know, when you really think about it, it's funny. Carry each other's burdens, Paul says, is the practical expression of Jesus's words of the greatest commandment, love thy neighbor as yourself. So let's just pause and think about that for for a moment. Paul gives us a practical way to fulfill the greatest commandment. And yet this verse, we don't see, uh, you know, in the living room of our houses where it says blessed. Uh, We don't see it on people's tattoos regularly. It's kind of one of those passages that's forgotten or kind of pushed aside, but it's Mm -hmm. a really big deal passage uh, because it's a practical expression of how to love thy neighbor as yourself. So how do we carry each other's burden? Well, first, we should probably define what is a burden. A burden can be anything that's an overbearing weight for an individual to bear on their own. It could be unemployment, loss of a loved one, sickness, the list goes on. The point, though, is when we see each other, the family of God, brothers and sisters, overwhelmed with the burden, we're called to support. Now, this is a good distinction because some of us can get into this mind frame of, superheroism, right? Where I'm going to do everything and and I'm just going to be a superhero for this person. No, no, no. You want to be support. You're to bring some form of comfort and relief. You're not to be God for that person. Right. Let God be God. You be a brother, you be a sister, and you bring in support. Yeah. And if I may, sorry, I'm in a, I'm in a preaching mindset right now. <laughs> a couple ways you can be support, just real easy, is one, and this is a big one, just show up, be present. Be present and be sensitive to the tug, to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, listen. God's given us two ears, do twice as much listening as speaking. I always try to convince people because people don't believe me, but you would not believe how impactful it is when you listen to people and just allow them to share what they're going through. And then third, you can connect. If you know people, connect people to other people. And then fourth, just resource, uh, utilize your resources and your skills. Uh, maybe you have a lot of time, uh, then then you can be present and help people. Maybe they have chores. Uh, you know, at our church, we have people that may not be able to do all the, the home tasks they need, cleaning up their yard. Maybe you have the time to help do that. Maybe you have special skills, uh, whether it's uh, woodwork or or 
I, I was going to say plunging, <laughs> plumbing. <laughs> Sorry, forgive me. You can tell he hasn't yeah. uh, ever been a plumber. Yeah, I'm not a handyman at all. So I, I need those skills. If, if you, I, I love it when people even service our, our campus with, with uh, their abilities. It's, it's a huge blessing to us. Mm-hmm. And can you break down the difference between that and like carrying your load? Because yes. Paul talks about that too. That's so important because sometimes people will say, well, it's a contradiction, carry your own burdens and carry your own load. It's really not. It's two different Greek words. The word for load is fortune, which is is about a person, personal responsibility that an individual has. And so two things can be true. We're called to help carry the overwhelming burdens that life will place on us as family of God, but then we're, we're supposed to own our own personal load. And, and that is really our faithfulness to God with our, with our time, with our talents, with our resources. We're going to all stand before God one day and hopefully hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Faithful with what? With my life with my time, with my talents, and my resources. Mm -hmm. That's something that I have to take ownership of while simultaneously being available to support the brothers and sisters who have an overwhelming weight in their life. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty awesome. Thanks for joining us, Duane, on the Clovis Hills podcast. I believe you can find us on Spotify, YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe as well, and we'll see you next time. (laughs) 